What's going on, people? Welcome to the Wrap Up Podcast with myself, Louis J. Walker, and my co-host, Cal Griffin. Cal, say hi to the people. How's it going? We all good? Guys, let me introduce firstly the Wrap Up Podcast as a brand new video series coming fresh to YouTube on MIDI TV's YouTube channel. Myself, Louis J. Walker, hosting it. My guy, Cal Griffin, co-hosting. We're going to be doing a few, quite a few episodes. We're going to be having a lot of different guests in from the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, people like entrepreneurs, business owners, um, people like events organizers, Commerce. DJs, and musicians, everyone, everybody. And we're going to get to the right down the nitty gritty and talk about everything with all these different people. And it's going to be great. But first of all, we're going to use this episode as sort of an introduction. We're going to find out about my co-host, Cal Griffin. Cal, let's uh, start at the start. Let me introduce you to the people, first of all. Okay. Uh, Cal Griffin, um, <laughs> music producer, DJ, um, supported some massive names that we're going to get in and talk about really soon. Um, Cal, let's talk about your journey as a DJ, first of all. Let's talk about um, how you first got into music and who inspired you. Yeah, okay. So uh, I first got into music, I mean, you know, my dad, my older brother, they've always been influences. My dad's okay. My dad was in the Royal Marines band, so I've been growing up with music nice. all throughout my life. Yeah. Um, my brother, uh, he used to be in a metal band, and uh, he's now a events promoter, and now has gone into like other realms of that. So he now works for like Live Nation, one of the biggest promoters. Yeah, yeah, in amazing. The country, uh, putting on uh, activations and mm, nice. some of the biggest commercial festivals in the UK. Amazing. So yeah, I've always had that, um, always had the drive there to want to be in music from those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I first got into DJing um, after my older brother Ash here uh, asked me to um, promote, like help him promote one of his nights. So I'd right. stick up posters and sell tickets for like yeah, yeah, yeah. the student nights. Um, I was watching one of the DJs and I was like, oh, that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I started mixing dubstep. <laughs> yes, um, love dubstep. I actually found those mixes that I did the other week, and they are god awful. <laughs> On site, I can't, <laughs> mate. I can't believe I ever released it. <laughs> I, like some of them were like the. I think one of the mixes was called the mix that had no name. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm so, I, if I met myself. If I could meet myself, like when I, who I was back then, I'd definitely punch him. Oh, don't, because I'm exactly the same. Like, but yeah, from that, I just yeah, I used to mix dubstep. I used to like do these, do these events. Yeah. Um, then I moved to London. Um, we're going on a few years now. So yeah. I, I went to uni in London um, and worked at a venue called Printworks. What did um, you study at uni? Uh, I mean, I was only there for three months. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say you went to uni. <laughs> I'm going to uni again now. It's fine. Three months. Um, I, do you know what? I can't even remember what I did. Uh, it was journalism. 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 It, I think it was just to move to London and like. Yeah, just yeah, different. You know, because no, I'm from Devon. It's amazing. A lot of people go to university to sort of find out who they are, don't they? Yeah. So I got a job at a venue called Printworks in London. Yeah, that's one of one of the biggest venues. Yeah, big venue. Uh, Printworks. Check it out. Um, so I was, I was doing artist liaison jobs there yep. and uh, I stage managed a couple of uh, events there as well. Nice, nice. Um, and that really got me back in love with, you know, electronic music. Yeah. Um, so I started DJing again. Um, now I'm on to house. house love and house music. Tech house, house. House music is massive. Yeah. Um, I mean, so one of my first gigs back was supporting DJ EZ in uh, Torquay. Huge name. Yeah. I opened for DJ EZ in Torquay. Um, and then I was just starting me to make mixes, putting them out. My brother asked me for a mix. Um, I was like, okay, what's this going to be for? He was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to send it to a couple of people. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, so I did like a nice sort of festival-y type mix, like what I would play at a festival. Yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I got an email saying, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put you on Isle of Wight and Best of All." Amazing. Uh, so I played those festivals, and then uh, I got, a couple of weeks later, I got announced for Reading Festival. Huge. Um, and this was all in 2019, and that was probably one of the. No, it wasn't. It was 18. 2018. 2018. Yeah. Uh, really good summer. Doing all those festivals, traveling around. Um, Who was headlining Reading Festival 2018? Can you remember? 
<laughs> too no. much of a bar. I was, I was in, he had too much of a good time. To I was in the bar too much. Yeah. Uh, was it? M no, it wasn't Eminem. Uh, that's going to really annoy me now. I think Eminem was a couple of years previous. I think it was 2017 yeah. Eminem. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So then I just was networking with people there. Yeah. Um, so then the next year I did uh, Isla White. Yeah. That's a lie. No, I didn't. I did. No, so so you basically, you got asked to put a mix together. Mm -hmm. This can literally happen to anyone. So any aspiring DJ, music producer that's watching this now um, that gets asked to do things, don't feel like you, you're you ever like better than that opportunity. Like exactly. Your brother could have said to you, oh, can you put me this mix together? I'm going to send it off to someone. You could have thought, yeah, all right, mate, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bother. Never have done it. And all of those things wouldn't have happened. But people need to take every chance that they're given. It's really important. Jump on every single opportunity. Yeah, just take it with both hands and run with it. And it doesn't matter how big or how small the opportunity is. The small opportunities always need to big opportunities. And that's literally proven there. You sent off a mix. You've got the email back saying that you're playing all these mad gigs and then mm -hmm. the following year you're going back and doing it again. Yeah, um, and then also, you know, if you send your mixes off to the right people, you're going to then encounter other people that are going to like that. They're going to, you know. So and another example of that is uh, yeah. my brother asked for a mix again. Um, yeah. He sent. He was working with a DJ called DJ EZ again. He Huge. comes, comes yeah. back up in this story. Everyone knows. Um, yeah, so I sent a mix. A couple of days later, I found out that I'd be supporting him in Birmingham. <laughs> okay. Um, on that lineup was Max Chapman, uh, Gorgon City, DJ EZ, me. Yeah. So really, big, really big gig. Big names. Um, yeah, so I played that. I feel like I smashed it. Like, really good feeling about that gig. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple of couple of days later, I got a phone call from DJ EZ's manager because um, yeah. they were looking for a DJ to open up on his gigs. Okay, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Some of them gone before him, like set what, the scene. like a mini tour. Yeah, like a tour. Um, yeah. So yeah, they were like, "Have you got a passport?" So I said no because I didn't. Um, they were like, "All right, we want you to go over to Ibiza for eight weeks and support DJ EZ on his Ibiza Rocks well, residence." That is insane. Like, imagine getting that. Was that a phone call? Yeah, phone call, man. Ma I was, I was at work. getting that phone call. Yeah, I was working for Boots at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this. I love this story. And would you do your phone's ringing? You quickly in the back room in Boots, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Eight so weeks, you say? <laughs> eight weeks in Ibiza, um, in between festivals such as Transmit Festival in Scotland, yeah, Reading Festival, Creamfields, yeah. It yeah. was all back to back in August, September, June, and it was just unreal. Like one of the best summers I had, well, so far. And then the old coronavirus hit. Yeah, so we're going to get into that. Let's talk about how coronavirus like affects you personally, like as a DJ, as someone who's playing a lot of gigs, like all the time, near enough every weekend, right? Like mm -hmm. in, in uh, ex uh, other places. Yeah. Um, for you, sort of, what's coronavirus done? How has it affected you? Um, I mean, obviously, it's completely halted gigs. So, you know, I'm not out there playing again. I'm not spreading the name. Um, because I, I really enjoy being in front of a crowd. That's I, a huge part of it, isn't it? Especially mm -hmm. for things like, especially for things like building your social media or building your name or building your brand, like actually being there in the flesh and seeing people, that's how you create like real sort of followers, real fans, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely. Sort of... um, during the first lockdown or just before the first lockdown, I was starting to produce a track um, within house as well. I mean, we've managed to get that out luckily. So yeah. that's out now, Freak Like like a Freak. Like a Freak. I was gonna say Come Freak on, Like I me. played it on BBC Radio the other night. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we managed to get that out. Um, but yeah, I, it's just affected the whole live scene because I, I miss going out every weekend and playing. Um, so hopefully that comes back as soon as possible. Yeah, that's it, that's the thing. And it's the same thing for me, like obviously being um, a live act, being a rapper, like. I support like a lot of bigger artists, as you know, Cal DJs for me, if you've seen me live, you'll see Cal behind the decks making the magic happen. The man with the magic fingers. <laughs> but, <laughs> Jesus. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, exactly that, it's all come to a halt and there's been no live shows. Um, but, you know, the time that we're in now, we're sort of coming towards 
the tail end of it, I'd mm -hmm. like to think. There's sort of light at the end of the tunnel. There's dates that are being posted out. There's tickets that are being sold. Like you can literally smell the burger vans and the festivals. Oh, so I cannot wait. It's, yeah. it's getting so close. I got another booking the other day and I was so excited. That's the thing, the yeah. Whole day. That's yeah. the thing. I mean, we're both playing Altitude Festival. Altitude Festival, um, we're both playing Party in the Castle. Party in the Castle is going to be huge. Uh, September the 18th. Yeah. Yeah, Big I mean, Gate, Rudimental, got... Nathan Dorr. The book I got the other day was Pink Moon. Yeah. Shout out Pink Moon again. Pink uh, Moon. Shout out Pink Moon. The in first day they can open, they've yeah. managed to get me into DJ. Yeah, I so love I'm that. Gonna absolutely love shell that. some disco hats. I'm, I'm gonna be there as well, definitely. <laughs> tickets are on sale now. Tickets are on sale now. Yeah. Go to Pink Moon's Instagram. Hit the link in the bio and get the tickets for the event. It's gonna be large. Cal's gonna be there. Yeah, you're gonna be there. I'm gonna be there sipping some cocktails. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love that place. So yeah, man, no, but coronavirus, like you say, it's affected you, everything's come to a halt, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, a key thing for people to remember that when, you know, you've got to survive in the dark to appreciate the light. Yeah, deep. That's, you know, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, man. You know, you got to take every chance. Um, Cal, let's get into it. Most memorable moment in your musical career. Um, so far, it would be when I played Transmit Festival in 2019. Uh, yeah. The first day, I was on the Utility Power Tree. Uh, 20 minutes into my set, I don't even think it was 20 minutes to be sure, I think it was about 10. <laughs> yeah. I got a, a tap on the back um, yeah. from my brother who was, you know, promoting that, doing that. Uh, he was like, um, you need to go with this guy. I was like, okay, well, what have I done? Interrupting <laughs> my set. Yeah, like, yeah, I was pretty happy. I thought I was doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so he was like, you need to follow this guy. You need to go over to main stage. I was like, ha. Huh. Okay, what's happened? Uh, Fredo didn't turn up, so they managed to pull some strings and put me on the main stage. <laughs> Just put Cal <laughs> on the main stage, pulled him away from playing it in front of like a couple thousand people, and then said like, how many people were on the main stage? About 45,000 people. 45,000 people. So Cal gets a tap on the shoulder, follow us mate. Fredo hasn't turned up, can you fill in? How long? Um, I think I played about 20 minutes. Because um, twenty minutes in front of forty-five thousand. Yeah, people. they managed to like speed up the lineup and that's amazing. Push the people forward, but yeah, I mean, I always have this recurring nightmare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, oh, I'm going to have this nightmare again tonight now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went up there. I played. I just played basically what I was going to play on the stage that I was, but like the dance stage. I was just playing some house. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was playing some shitty Storm Stormzy remix because I was like, oh, he's headlining tonight, so why don't I just do that? Yeah. Um, yeah, but if I could have my time again, I would definitely play just like some party tunes because they were, they were all mad for it. They in, just... in your nightmare, does the name scenario pop into it as well? Can we tell people about the, that? The name scenario, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> after I came off stage, uh, my dad was with me. He, he like tour manages my shout out Vance. I could say tour managers, he just comes along for the party. Yeah, he's there. Uh, the guy who was stage managing the main stage asked him what my name was. And I'm not sure if it was him maybe being drunk at two o'clock in the afternoon or the Scottish stage manager. When he said Cal Griffin, it somehow got mixed up in translation and was Carl Griffin. So when I walked off the stage on the massive side hangs on the stage, yeah. it said that was Carl Griffin. Carl, C A R L. Not even C, K. Oh, it's a K as well. Yeah. Oh. So that went out in the Sun Scotland newspaper. I can hear that though in the Scottish action. In, in the Scottish I'm not accent. gonna do it, but yeah, <laughs> I can hear it too, yeah. Carl, correct. So I, man, <laughs> I walked back to the stage that I was playing on, and obviously word had got round. Yeah, yeah. And the guys that were running the stage had put uh, a dressing room sign with a star in the middle saying Carl Griffin. Oh, amazing. And they just amazing. Yeah, ripped me for the entire weekend. <laughs> And I still get it now. <laughs> yeah, People yeah, call no, me Carl. No, no, just, oh, I might Carl. have to change it. Oh, that's brilliant. So, tell us about. Um, tell us about. Uh, firstly, like for the people that are watching this, aspiring DJs, music producers, people that want to get involved in the industry, like what's your key advice for them? Um, grab every every opportunity you can. Uh, email those promoters on Facebook. Send your mix out to your friends, send them out to, you know, if you see an event and you're like, oh, I really want to play that gig, message the promoter to be like, look, here's my mix. Is there any like chance you could give me a slot of your next gig or this gig? 
just, you know, network, network, network. Yeah. On any Facebook events page, there's always a contact email and it's more than likely going to be the promoter or the events coordinator or mm -hmm. someone involved in that. So just look out for the email and drop all your information down. If you are keen on playing shows or you want to get your name out there, that's definitely something to do. 100%. Yeah, you're right. And like you say, by grabbing opportunities with both hands and it doesn't matter what it is. Like we've played shows in front of a handful of people mm -hmm. and then we've played shows in front of thousands of people and it doesn't matter for me especially it doesn't matter whether i'm playing in front of 10 people or a thousand people i still give it the same energy yeah 100 percent. and we did like that gig that we played in front of a few people we still smashed it absolutely smashed even it. if the headliner didn't <laughs> we won't talk about it <clears throat> <laughs> Rhymes with. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say. It. Uh, oh no, but it's been. If you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. But Matt, the guys, old Twitter exchange. Um, obviously, you can find me on social media at Louis J Walker and Cal Griffin at Cal Griffin DJ. That's the one. Um, and just come and check out what we do. We play a lot of live shows. Um, we're gonna play a lot of live shows. <laughs> gonna play some more. Um, we're supporting people like Nathan Dorr, Rudimental. Um, other big names as well, some that I can't mention yet because timing and um, just come and check out what we do. Um, we're friendly. Yeah, we're friendly. And this is the wrap up podcast. I've been Louis J. Walker. That's Cal Griffin. I think it's a good time to wrap it up. Make sure that you guys subscribe by hitting the button down below. Hit the like button. Come and check us out on social media. Uh, big up Midi TV for giving us the platform to do this podcast. Shout out everybody watching this. Guys, leave us a comment down below. Let us know some feedback. Cal, it's been great getting to know you. It's been great getting to know you too. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll see you guys soon.